Psalm 23. It says this. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that as we come to your word, may any words that are of you, manifest themselves in the hearts and mind of those here and online, Father, and not just in this moment, Father, but throughout the week. May we encounter the hope that comes from knowing you. May we encounter peace. May we encounter transformation in Jesus' name. Amen. So today, last week, we were looking at Rooted in the Valley, in which Richard brought a great, it was a fantastic word, wasn't it, for all those that are here? And so today, we're looking at being rooted in the mountain. Now, being rooted in the valley is probably a lot more challenging than being rooted in the mountain. What I mean by that is, it's like putting it like this, a man with millions won't struggle with money won't struggle to buy food, but a man who is homeless will beg for money for food. Another way of putting it is that in the presence of God, in the presence of finding ourselves experiencing blessing after blessing, that it's easy for us to be in that place where we're saying, oh great, God, it's so easy to love you right now. God, it's so easy to worship you right now. Whereas when we're in the valley, it becomes more challenging. We have many people in our congregation who are living in that valley at the moment. Many people living in, that, in the valley in the shadow of darkness around them. And our prayer should always be that may they know God's, our, our shepherd's rod and staff as it comforts them. But in the presence, in the darkest of valleys, he prepares a table for us. In the presence of my enemies. In other words, in all that we face in the valley, there's a table being prepared for us. There's a table prepared for us in the presence of all that. So our mountain top, our mountain top, or being rooted in the mountain, should always come from a place of knowing what the valley looks like. And knowing that in one moment, you might be, like for most of us here, or some of us here, we might be feeling that we're on a mountain top high. Tomorrow, we could be equally in the dark valley. So it's about being rooted in Christ, knowing his hope. It's about knowing, oh, this isn't even on. It's about knowing Christ is our shepherd. The psalmist declares that the Lord is our shepherd. And this echoes throughout scripture and not just the Old Testament, but the New Testament. Jesus is the shepherd over his flock. Jesus is the shepherd over his disciples. Here's something for you. Jesus was the shepherd over Judas, knowing that Judas was going to betray him. I can't wrap my head around that. We see from the good shepherd 
in John 10 to Ezekiel 34, we find a consistent theme throughout Scripture of God's tender care and guidance for his people. God is a jealous God. And we all, we, we may think that jealousy is a bad thing. We always think there's always negative connotations of a jealous partner who becomes controlling and abusive. But if my wife Zoe started flirting with another man, and she wouldn't, and I know she wouldn't, I would become jealous. And I believe that that jealousy in which I feel is a jealousy that so is my wife. In covenant of marriage, she is my wife. In whom, as I shared at communion, in my struggles, I will share it with her. In my, in my sin, I will share what I have done. And in the same way, God in the Old Testament was jealous when his bride, when Israel went away from God. God, countless times, where Deuteronomy will find it, would say, would say, I will bless you, people of Israel, if you are obedient, but I will curse you if you are disobedient. God offers blessings and equally he must offer curses. I've heard, I've heard some preachers do theological gymnastics around that to try say, well, God, any bad thing we experience, God, God is never involved in it. That's just humanity. And although I believe that there is spiritual warfare, I also believe in the story of Job, where Satan asked God's permission. Oh, I'll put it further. God says, How about my servant? For me, that's a tough truth. And over the past couple of years, when I've I found myself looking at different theological viewpoints, from the charismatic viewpoint to the reformed viewpoint, I find that the reformed viewpoint offers greater hope. The reformed view doesn't create a picture of of God being Manny Pacquiao. And the enemy being May Mayweather. I'm, I'm not good. I don't know boxing. <laughs> but I don't think it's like that. God wouldn't be God if, if his creation could overwhelm and overcome him. There's good news there. God cannot be overcome. God cannot be overwhelmed. Christ cannot be overcome. Christ cannot be overwhelmed. And we see that in the temptation. Christ wasn't overwhelmed. He was feeling hungry. Like, I am sure Jesus was hungry. He must have been. Must have been. But he wasn't overwhelmed by his hunger and compromised who he was. We must drink from the source. As students seek answers from the source, when I was at Bible college, when looking at essays, I would always have to look at scripture as the main source, but also commentaries as secondary sources to seek answers. We must too, in the mountaintop high, in the valley low, seek God's comfort through his word. 
God's word deepens our knowledge of Christ, the foundation on which we stand. If we are not growing in Christ, then we really need to be thinking about where we are in our faith. If we plant a seed and we water it, the tree will grow. But if we don't, the seed will die. Life isn't always filled with the mountaintop moments. They're always filled with the dark. They're also filled with the darkest valleys. So we must trust, we must trust, sorry, we must trust Christ as our shepherd. Dark valleys through scripture represent trials, tribulations and challenges. The three things we face as Christians. When you become a Christian, we don't become, we don't receive a stamp of approval in which when, when trials, tribulations, challenges come, it's almost like we are painted with, as we see it in the Old Testament, like the doors painted in blood so that the angel of death would pass by. Actually, in fact, as Christians, we are faced with the trials, tribulations, and challenges. But the good news is we will not be lost. We will not be overwhelmed. Why will we not be lost? Because actually we are rooted in Christ. We will not be overwhelmed because Christ comforts us. Christ is with us in all that we face. There's good news that no matter what we are faced with, God is our deliverer. God is our deliverer. For those in our congregation who has faced loss, God is our comfort and our shield. For those that are facing cancers, those that are facing illnesses, God is our healer. There is good news. We can trust Christ as our saviour because Christ is trustworthy. His rod and his staff, they comfort us. When Christ leaves the 99 to find the one, we should be challenged. How much are we willing to go out and say, God, by your leading, send us to the one that is lost? Christ is with us. All that we face, all that we endure, Christ is with us. But it comes with growth. The more we experience the valleys, the more we experience the goodness of God in our journeys, the more we see God's hand in our situations the more we find ourselves growing in our reliance of who he is. The good news is, is God wants to grow us. He wants, he wants us to know him. He wants us, and as Jean shared at the beginning, her testimony, through her testimony, she had an opportunity to know God and his promises and for us as Christians, there's that invitation to know Christ deeper. So as we look at the new year, the new, I should say, in September, August, September, what are ways in which we can know God deeper? 
We have Christianity, we have our discipleship pathway. It's an opportunity as Christianity Explorer for us to explore what we believe and why we believe what we believe. That brings us to Discipleship Explored, where we can grow spiritual development. Like grown plants, we need to flourish in our walk with Christ, engaging in life groups, engaging in prayer meetings, engaging in discipleship pathway, engaging in the areas of our church, the ministries in which our church that is offering to provide that spiritual need. But not only that, at home we must be growing in our knowledge of Christ. And not only that, we must be sharing the good news of Christ. We must be sharing the good news of the gospel. We must share Christ as our shepherd. What, what kind of good news is it? If it's exclusive. It's not good news at all. A, f- a vegan restaurant isn't good news for someone going in looking for a cheeseburger. <laughs> it's not. The gospel isn't good news if our attitude is saying, well, only my friends are welcome, but you're not. That's not good news. That's not the gospel. Christianity is an inclusive faith. I'm not turning progressive. You might be thinking, where where is the pastor going here? But the gospel brings us in. The gospel gospel invites us in. But what does Jesus offer? What does Jesus say? Repent and believe. Repent and believe. We become a sanctuary of hope a sanctuary of hope to the broken the DNA of Hope Paul is bringing hope to the broken communities of Paisley and Charleston and Alice Street the beauty of us being a sanctuary of hope isn't that we're saying look come to Hope Paul where you'll find hope in a hall It's saying, it is saying there's hope. No matter what you're facing, you may be going through the valley of the shadow of death. There's hope. You may, you may be on a mountaintop high where you feel that you don't need God. I remember my my dad telling me when I was a kid, one of the things he, he, he told me, he was like, you, you're born with nothing and you'll die with nothing. And I've held on to that within my Christian faith that I, I was born with nothing. My bank account doesn't matter. What means we have doesn't matter. I can't wait. I can't play a poker game with God in heaven, Blay, or with St. Peter at the entrance, or however it will look, and say, hey, God, God will not be bribed by what I have in the bank account because I can tell you something. Heaven's storehouses have greater riches than this world will have ever seen. So as we conclude, Being rooted in the mountains and being rooted in the valley is, a, is less about being rooted in our specific situations, but being rooted in Christ as our shepherd. 
is about being rooted in where God is leading us and the valley of life when we feel lost and overwhelmed we must, we must remember to trust Jesus as our shepherd just like in the psalm and many others he walks beside us guiding and protecting us through the darkest moments even when life's challenges seem unbearable we can find comfort knowing that his presence and his faithfulness sustains us. Let's embrace the the assurance that with Christ as our shepherd, we can navigate all sorts of storms, for he is with us, leading us to green pastures and still waters of peace. He is our sanctuary of hope. Let's pray. I'm going to invite the band to come up as we pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that in this word, may you transform our hearts. No matter what we are facing, Father, may we be rooted in Christ, in Christ alone, where all our hope is and where our hope is secured and where all our hope is found. In Jesus' name, amen.